Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Living Death DOS Virus. Now, scary name and equally scary payload, as it is very destructive. And today we're going to do it a little differently, and after I show you the virus and its activation and payload and everything, I'm going to show you how I clean up after it on a standalone computer, which I'm using now. I'm using a Packard Bell 386, circa 1990, 1989, somewhere around then. Alright, let's go ahead and run the virus is now present in memory and will infect files. However, when the date is December 27th of any year, if I can hit the hyphen key, there we go, and we restart the computer, we will see its payload. Okay, no disks in the drive, just gotta make sure. Otherwise it won't boot properly. Now instead of booting up to the DOS prompt, we get this message. I am the living death. I am coding your hard disk now. Your fat is destroyed and his copy is only in memory. If you set power off, all your data will be lost. However, even if you don't power off, you, this screen just stays here. So, really, your only choice is to power off. And we'll get a zoom in on the message. A little bit here. There we go. Alright, now we're going to look at how to clean up after a virus like this. Because, because while it does destroy the FAT, it also wipes the CMOS memory, which contains the computer's information on the settings of the floppy disk drives and how big the hard disk is. And on a machine like this, that's so old, it doesn't contain any routines to restore this information. So you have to do it manually, which we will do now. Alright, Control alt delete are disabled, or maybe not. Huh. It actually worked this time. Alright. So we're restarting here. See what happens. So you get a different sound there. Because the machine failed to post. So time of day clock stopped. Invalid configuration information. Time of day not set. Alright. We're on the setup utility. Now we're in the BIOS screen here. Standard CMOS checksum was invalid because it was wiped. So the defaults were loaded. Signature byte was invalid, chipset defaults were loaded, memory size invalid. Alright, so we have two drives here. Disk at A is most definitely not a five and a quarter inch drive. It is 3.5 high density. And disk B is installed. It is a five and a quarter inch drive. And then the hard disk is a type 34, 106 megabytes. There we go, or 102 megabytes, sorry. Our memory is going to be messed up. We'll get that error. I think the video card is a CGA 80 column. And this was common back in the early 1980s, but certainly not for a Packard Bell. We are using VGA, so. All right, set up most of it. Now we'll restart again. By the way, if you haven't figured it out, all of your data would be lost by now, so living death is a pain in the ass. Well, now it detects the drives properly. Alright. Set up again. And now the memory is set properly, so we can save settings and restart normally. Put the DOS diskette in the drive here. If I can find it in the dark. There we go. Move the camera a little bit. Go ahead and boot from the diskette. Wait for it.
any time now. Ah, uh, right. Okay. There we go. We need to exit out of install. And for a virus like this, we need to reset up the partition table. So, F disk. Delete the active partition. Alright, and now we will create a new one. Alright, now the system will restart again. And then we will format the drive, and then we will start installing DOS. Okay, we're not going to wait for this to boot up again, but I'll, I'll just explain it to you like I just did. Once it boots up, we'll format the disk. It can't be quick formatted, it has to be regularly formatted, which takes a few more minutes. Then the installation of DOS takes about 15 more minutes. So you're looking about 30 minutes of recovery time after a virus like that. Most of the time, it is possible to do a quick format, so resetting the computer to its basic state is not as time-consuming or difficult. However, living death is quite complex, so that's about it for the living death DOS virus.